Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we will be talking about the Bitwig vocoder. Uh, before we jump into the Bitwig one, I thought it would be a little bit easier if we use the tall vocoder for an example. We start to learn the terminology, understand the routing, and then we'll jump in and use the Bitwig one, which can be used for, I think, uh, a lot more creative applications than just your typical Daft Punk style vocoder sounds. But everyone loves Daft Punk style vocoder sounds, so that's what we're going to begin with. The first thing that we need to do is we have to grab some kind of a dry vocal. And in this case, um, I'm just going to use this first one here. You could use anything. I'll link to the pack. Um, that I got this from. All the things you love. And I'm gonna go ahead and just bring that on to an audio track for now. And when we look at this thing, the first thing that you almost always wanna do is see how Bitwig has analyzed the tempo um, and also see you know, what sort of a, a stretch mode that you're in if you wanna adjust that. So if we listen to this right now, it's probably gonna sound a little bit funky. Uh, our global is 110, it's analyzed this as 165. All the things you love. The beauty is that when you're using a vocoder, if you're not playing to use this in a raw state, something like this would actually be fine. It might actually sound cooler, you never know. But let's just go ahead and let's have this, which is I think around 83-ish. Yeah, that's more or less created that All one the bar. Things you love. And we'll go in and we'll match that globally. All the things you love. Bring that down like so. All right, that sounds fine to me. All the things you love. And the last thing I'd probably do before I go in and bring on a vocoder, well, normally, and I'll say this here as like a caveat, when I'm doing vocoder stuff, the first thing I would normally do is bring in Melodyne, do some extreme like pitch manipulation, and I'd usually even bring Auto-Tune then after Melodyne. If anyone's interested to see how I do my vocoder workflow, feel free to leave that comment. I'll show it to you um, if you're curious, but this is gonna be fine. This is gonna work. The thing I don't like is that there's so much kind of like pitch variation that when it goes into the vocoder, it's gonna pick up on that, which is a cool effect. But if you're doing like a synth pop type thing, you normally don't want that um, just because it sounds kind of weird. But what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna bring in a dynamics. This would be the other thing that I would typically do. And I'm gonna crush this sound a little bit. Uh, let's see, Bitwig dynamics, great. All the things you love. All the things you love, all the things you love, all the things you love, all the things you love. Just want to make sure it's tickling it the whole time. All the things. And that's fine, but you can still hear at the beginning, it definitely kind of jumps. That's where it's really loud. So what I might just do is uh, kind of adjust this a little bit. Just bring these guys down some. All the, all the, all, all. All the things, all the things you love, all the things you love. And that should make it love. evened out a little bit better. All the things you love. Okay, I'm definitely happy with that. Um, the one thing I might still go in and do with this clip, though, is just, like, auto-fade it. Okay. All the, th all the things you love. All the things you love. Yep, I'm happy enough with that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring the vocoder on. So we're going to look for the tall vocoder, and we're going to start to understand how this thing is working. Okay, so with the tall vocoder, all right, we have uh, two paths that you need to be aware of, or we have two signals. We have the modulator signal, and we have the carrier signal. Typically... Um, you would associate the modulator signal with like what's modulating the sound. So like if you had a flanger or something onto a vocal, you'd consider that the modulator. In this case, it works a little bit differently. The modulator signal is actually going to be our vocal. Okay. And then the carrier is what actually carries that sound or what carries that information. And in this case, it's going to be a synthesizer. You see pause, saw, sub, noise. All right, don't get too bogged down on the terminology, but you just have to realize that like the carrier is actually like what is going to be more or less the output. All right, what is going to influence that vocal? What's going to make it sound like a vocoder? What's going to make it sound like the Daft Punk sound if that's what you're going for? And that is going to be the carrier signal. So if we go in here, and again, we're on our instrument track, if we choose no input and instead go all the things you love, and for some reason, I just like to have it this way, we're going to select pre 
And the reason for that is so we can actually mute this sound and we can still get an effect. So if I mute this now, we're not gonna get anything. If I started to play notes, we would hear stuff. And let's just loop this part so that we can keep some sound going. And you can do all sorts of fun stuff. And we, we actually are um, have a clip we'll listen to later that I've just brought in just so we can have a little bit of fun with it. Um, if we choose input mode and switch that to modulator, what that's gonna allow us to do is to hear this sound um, you know, in its, in its state now, because when the modulator sound is brought in, what happens is with a vocoder, you have all of these bands and these are all bandpass filters. Okay. So it's putting the sound in a bunch of different bandpass filters. And that's exactly what it's going to sound like when we click this in. All the things you love. You get that kind of like uh, telephone type of effect. And if you notice, or if you hear something that's really sticking out, all the things you, love. you could go in here and you could edit all that. Okay, it's basically love, working like a band EQ. All the things you love, all the things you love, I'm just going to take out the top and the bottom. All the things you love, Not all, all the, way. the things you love, all the things you love. That makes it a little more intelligible. So the more bands you have from the get-go, the clearer your signal is going to be. So the retro vintage vocoders, it's typically like eight or 12 of these bands. I think in here we have 12. And then in something like Bitwig, where you're not limited to hardware components, you can make it 64, 84, 128 type bands, and then you're going to get a really clear signal from the get-go. Um, but then it is harder to achieve that retro effect. This is going to give us a retro effect right away. So I all like the way this the sounds. You love, all the things you love. And you can actually hear when we turn harmonics up, it gives us almost more of that doubling type effect. And it's kind of like crossing over those frequency bounds a little bit. So I'm just messing all with these signals the to get something you interesting. Love, all the things you love. And I'm happy all enough with that. So we'll go back into modulator mode. And now when we're playing this and we're looping it over, we can start to play some chords. And it's really loud, so let's turn the volume down. OK, let's go back to that view. And if you're a good keyboard player, you can play in something really cool here if you want. I am not a very good keyboard player. So instead, we're just going to bring in this clip here. And we're going to loop this guy again and again and again. And let's just take a listen to this right now. And as we listen to that, we can use this carrier, basically this synthesizer. We can adjust the sound that's coming in and kind of lock in the sound that we like. We also have a chorus effect, which is very nice and something that you classically hear with this type of sound. You can immediately hear the effects that all these things are having. And obviously we could then go in and we could affect this sound further with more effects, EQ, delay, whatever you want to do. But that is the basics of the vocoder right there. So next up, we're going to take a look at the Bitwig vocoder and see how much further we can go. All right. This is a very basic vocoder effect. It does what you expect it to do. But with Bitwig, we can always take things one step further.
in case I didn't mention it already, one of the positive things about the vocoder is that it doesn't matter so much the melodic or harmonic content of the modulator signal. If you're playing keys and your modulator, and you could hear it as I was changing these things, um, if your carrier is key tracking properly or it's tuned properly, you are going to get that note. So when I play a C, I am getting a C. Doesn't matter what's coming through here. That's the whole reason why we break this up into different bands because once we play a note on our carrier it's lifting those bands specifically so it's like lifting the band where a c2 is or where an a3 is or whatever you're doing that's why as we play through this it's sounding house chordy and you can hear that it's tracking appropriately like so okay just wanted to point that out in case anybody was confused that's often a common question that we have with vocoders now, with our Bitwig vocoder, what we have is just a ton more control. You can see as we go in here, we have things like floor and ceiling values that we can adjust, all right, as we listen to that signal. We have global low uh, frequencies and high frequencies, okay? And that's going to adjust where it puts the lowest band pass and the highest one. So like right now, if we went all the way down to eight bands, we could still create one of those band pass frequencies way down here, or we could adjust that. Same thing with the high pass frequencies. This is a really nice thing to have to kind of lock in your sound. Right now, if we put this on just our track, which is where it is, this is going to serve, whatever's on this track is gonna serve as the modulator, okay? So it could be a synth patch or it could be an audio track. It really doesn't matter, just as long as something is coming All in. The things you love. And as an input, you can adjust the volume, but that's about it. Um, and and then from there in our carrier, by default, what you get is brown noise, okay? And brown noise is basically energy at every single frequency that's adjusted to our human hearing. So if you think about it, so it doesn't sound as harsh as white noise, which is equal energy at every frequency. And obviously from like 10K to 20K, there are as many frequency points, higher frequencies as there are from like zero to 10K. So brown noise tries to scale that out a little bit for you. So it's nowhere near as harsh. It makes sense why they put this in here by default. We don't need this audio receiver for now. We just need the brown noise and we can listen to what it does. Very low because we have eight bands and the lowest band is being set at 120 hertz. We can make this a little higher if we bring this up. Let's try to lock it in somewhere nice. We're just getting the tips. And again, this is actually a very advanced process what's going on um, because again, the first thing it's doing is it's splitting our signal into eight bands. And then if we bring this floor value like way, way, way up here, it's only gonna hear or react to anything that spits up above that when the modulator sound is coming in. And then the same thing, we could limit it somewhere else. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense why it's sounding and adjusting the way it's adjusting, just based on what this would look like if we looked at this modulator signal in a frequency analyzer, all right? So I'm not gonna go too much into that here. I just wanted you guys to kind of see this. So let's bring our floor value down. Let's bring this back up. And now the question you might ask is, okay, well, how are we going to make this um, a little bit clearer? Okay, like how are we gonna get this to sound a little bit more like the signal that it sounds like? And one of the easy ways to do that is to increase the number of bands. So now it's creating 48 bands within this region. And as I go down, I'm starting to get a little more of that fundamental.
Okay, it's a little dark still, but we can go and we can adjust this. We can actually make this sound a little bit more like resonate E, depending on how we adjust our bandwidth of the bands that we've created. So we've created 48 bands, starting at 214 hertz, ending at 3.86 hertz. And then here we can adjust, okay? We can adjust how broad it is, whether it's steeper or gentler. Let's just listen to that. Let's make it gentler. Or they say broader. And now let's adjust this and see how it changes the sound. This is a very interesting sound. If we go the other direction, we're getting like a lot of junk up here, just a lot of junk in general. And that's causing some problems in terms of if we're trying to hear it clearly. We also have our attack and release. And that's so interesting, the way they kind of play with each other and, and, and play off each other, all those bands all spitting out. I love this control right here. It's so much fun to mess with. You almost get a reverb. And then the last option we have is a way to kind of flip this into stereo. So like before we saw this, when we like click the chorus button, it's gonna be a similar type effect. This is just so much fun for me. And then we also have a freeze button on here which is a lot of fun if you're kind of recording stuff in real time. If you had a freeze and then you had some kind of like one of those glitch type effects, you know, those multi-effects units, you could use that over here as well and just get this thing to go absolutely ham. We also have a formant shift control as well as a brightness control. And we'll just listen to what that does. And it reacts in real time. So when you have that release on there, it can get all sorts of funky. But this is not like going to be as interesting when we're using brown noise as it would be uh, if we were using like, I think, a patch. But you can hear how it's basically just shifting the pitch. And like, this is the way in a lot of vocoders, there's kind of an effect that makes it sound more female-y versus more male. Um, again, though, that is going to depend heavily on what's happening here in the carrier signal. And then we also have a brightness control. <laughs> which I think is like the equivalent on the tall one of where we were kind of adjusting those bands up and down. This is doing it on more of a global level. So if we go down, it's either raising up the lower bands and maybe also lowering down the higher ones or vice versa. If we crank this up, it's going to raise the higher bands, lower the other bands. A fun effect. All right, let's do, let's make it a little more interesting. Create almost a soundscape with this. Let's try to create something really interesting. And you could imagine that if you were more of a experimental 
like electronic producer, you could put a lot of different like modulators onto these effects and you could very easily create a soundscape just using this vocoder and the effects and the freeze and all this stuff that exists within it. And again, I'm ima imagining some kind of like a repeater or glitcher type of effect here that would take things even to, to more of an extreme. Okay, so this is how you work with the Bitwig vocoder. Let's go ahead and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna bring everything back to its default state and then we'll do another example similar to what we did at the beginning with that tall vocoder if you want to bring it back to something more traditional. All right, so I've gone ahead and pre-set up some of this stuff. In Bitwig, one of the beautiful things is that there's a lot of flexibility with routings, but for me with a vocoder, the easiest thing to do is to create a group track, okay? Have what's gonna be your modulator source on one of those tracks and then have the vocoder on another track and that will ultimately be the one that's spitting out audio that you would mix on or what have you. You don't have to do it this way. This is just the way I like to do it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get this signal down into the vocoder so that we can split it out into bands and then put a carrier on here and, and get our effect. So to do that in the modulator area, we're gonna use an audio receiver. All right, there we go at the top. Okay, and right now the input we want is gonna be all the things you love pre. And now when we click play, we're not gonna hear anything, but at least we are gonna see the signal coming in like so. Okay, so we have the modulator signal in there. We can preview it. Love all the things you love. All right, and there you go. And then we're also going to need a carrier. Now, interestingly, what we could do is we could repeat this process. So we could bring in an audio receiver Okay, and have the input again be from the vocoder. And let's listen to this. All the things you love. What does that sound like to you? This is what it sounds like when we were doing the preview thing with the tall vocoder. That's how you would do it. So again, if you want to set up these bands and stuff, you could do that by listening to it like so. All the things you love. All the things you love. All the things you love. And then you could again kind of fine tune that in if you want to. That's not what we're doing, but just want to show you guys like this is a way you can kind of play with the bands and play with the ceiling. And I really do love having this control over here to really dial in the sound. It's really flexible if you know what you're going for. All right, so now let's go ahead and for our carrier, let's bring in something that reminds us of that really basic synthesizer that we had in the tall vocoder. And for me, the obvious choice here is the polysynth. So we're gonna bring in our polysynth and there it is. The Poly 6 from Korg would also be a great option here, but we're gonna use the Poly Synth from Bitwig. Let's get this out of the way so we can see everything. And now when we click play, we're not gonna hear anything until we, until we start to play in some notes, so. And there you have it. So now it's just gonna be a matter of fine tuning some things. So let's go ahead, let's bring in uh, another kind of like clip. Okay, sorry for the extreme cut. I just had to try to find something that was interesting. And this is pretty interesting. I like this one. So now let's get back in and let's like have a little bit of fun here uh, messing around. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with our primary controls. We're just gonna leave the carrier at its default. We'll get back into that in a second, but let's just mess around here. just trying to get a little bit of a darker sound. And I could go in and just drop all of this by an octave. That would probably be the simpler solution. But in the carrier, I can do that as well. Actually, no, I like it here. We'll make a blend. That's what we'll do. I don't want 
too much of that resin any effect. And now with the format, this is what I was telling you before, you can get more of a male sound. Or more of that funky sound. And we can fine tune the brightness. So that sounds pretty similar. And now inside of the carrier, we can play around as well. And we can adjust any parameter and it will have an impact on the sound, including the envelopes. So when it gets to the end, let's see if it kind of fades out. There we go. And now let's mess around with some of these parameters. So right now we just have one of these envelopes up. This is awesome. And then we can bring in a little bit of this second oscillator down here. Just a pure square wave. And don't forget, you can modulate this stuff too. Eh. We're just going to stick with that. <laughs> And now let's go back into these parameters and mess around a little more. Beautiful sound. Nope, I like that sound. So you can see there's a little bit of, uh, you know, just a, a lot of tweaking, how all these things impact one another, but you can end up with some really beautiful sounds if you know what you're going for and if you kind of know what you're doing. So I'm, I'm hoping that this video helps you out with that. So you can see we can get classic sounds, but you do kind of have to know where you're going, like what you're trying to do. Uh, we could lock a similar sound like this in, having more bands, but again, we're going to then have to go and kind of touch up everything. Things. So uh, I definitely like this one a lot. Yeah, something like that's awesome. There's a little bit of a resonant thing happening though. Ooh, that's because of the sink. But yeah, I could easily just sit here and tweak with it for hours and hours. Um, and I know Daft Punk, when they were making their records and their iconic vocoder sounds, they would just slave over it. And obviously they were working with hardware. So it was uh, a lot more of a labor of love, if you will. Anyway, we're gonna pause the video. We're gonna come back and we'll do one final example and we'll do something truly experimental just so you guys can hear that a vocoder can be used for more than just these sort of classic sounds. The last thing we're gonna do is something experimental that hopefully sounds kind of cool. So uh, this is gonna be our modulator. A nice little drum loop, okay? And when we click this off, we're going to hear right away what the vocoder has done to it. So it's already really filtered this thing heavily. And obviously we can go in and we can try to tweak and play with some of these settings. But before we do that, we're gonna establish what our carrier is. So uh, this is what our carrier is going to be. Okay, so you can imagine that this is gonna get really, really wild very quickly, especially because it, it adjusts over time. 
it does all sorts of different stuff. So I wanted to get like a loop that was kind of crazy. And um, this one, of course, is being forced down to 100 um, from 120 without adjusting its pitch. We could go in and we could actually just like repitch it. Maybe they'll sound more interesting. Let's try that. Okay, so that's what we're gonna try to use as our carrier. So of course we need to go in here and grab an audio receiver. All right, this is gonna sound pretty wild. I haven't tested this out in advance, so we'll see what happens. All the things you love, we'll go pre, we'll go in here, we'll mute that for now. And now we're gonna go and we're gonna listen to what happens when we use this loop as a carrier onto a drum loop. And I'm going to experiment so we can get some fun stuff happening here pretty quickly. And this is where you would absolutely want to have your remote controls and modulators set up to do wild stuff. I do want to overdrive into it. get to the meat of this sound. Oh, it's so much fun. I like it more at the higher bands. You can get more action. Let's do this. Everything is having a lot of fun effects. Probably more fun to do that the other way. Really limited up in this energy zone. And then just as a reminder, this is what we started with for our modulator sound. And this is what we started with for our carrier sound. All right, and that's gonna do it for our video on the vocoder. Of course, it is up to you to jump in there and really experiment and get crazy. This last example is probably not something that you're gonna ever be doing unless you make a lot of like crazy glitchy type music, but just so you know it's there, just so you know the possibilities are truly endless. So thank you so much for watching and hopefully you'll come back for another video soon. Take care.